हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वाइडली यूज टेक्निक व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन सो बेसिकली बेसिकली एज द नेम सजेस्ट प्रेसिपिटेशन व्हाट इट सजेस्ट यू यूज एंटीबॉडीज टू प्रेसिपिटेट सम काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन और एंटीजन इन दिस केस सो इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन इज वाइडली यूज व्हेन यू वांट टू सेपरेट अ पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ प्रोटीन्स फ्रॉम अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ प्रोटीन्स और अ वेरियस काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन्स ओके सो इट यूजेस अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ पेज एंड ऑल्सो यूज इज अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इम्यूनोलॉजी सो वी विल सी इट इन डेप सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली हैपन्स वेन यू डू अ इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन ओके सो वील सी दैट सो वॉट इज एक्चुअली इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन इट इज अ टेक्निक ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेटिंग अ प्रोटीन एंटीजन आउट ऑफ अ सोल्यूशन यूजिंग एन एंटीबॉडी दैट स्पेसिफिकली बाइंड्स टू दैट पर्टिक्युलर प्रोटीन ओके सो सो वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन विल सी दैट ओके सो इन दैट वी हैव टू यूज अ आइसोलेट एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेट अ पर्टिकुलर प्रोटीन फ्रॉम अ सैम्पल कंटेनिंग मेनी थाउजेंड्स ऑफ डिफरेंट प्रोटीन सो दिस इज हाउ इम्यूनो प्रेसिपिटेशन विल प्ले अ रोल इट विल यूज a particular set of antibodies majority of the time either monoclonal or a polyclonal antibodies to target a particular protein or a antigen from a sample which contains various proteins so this is the principle in general so as you can see over here we have various antigens which is in green color blue color and purple color so antigens will be subjected to a primary antibody interaction so as you can see our orange color antibody is interacting with green color antigen which is of our choice target antigen basically so you always specify your target and you what happens you add your secondary antibody to it so once you add secondary antibody your antigen uh, secondary antibody is bound to either agarose beads or a magnetic beads or agarose magnetic beads which i have explained in detail you know next slide okay so your secondary antibody which is going to bind to your primary antibody which is in turn bound to a antigen of our choice after that you wash off the excess of antigen okay <coughs> sorry and then you wash off the remaining antibodies also okay which were not bound to your primary antigen and uh, secondary antibodies you use the elution buffer majority of the time it will be mercapto ethanol okay and then it will elute out your protein of interest or antigen of interest from your primary and secondary antibody and then this will be run on a sds page and this is the basic principle of immuno precipitation so use the antibody to precipitate the antigen and then separate it out on sds page so what are the important points we should consider the use of antibody with high binding specificity and affinity for the antigen is crucial for a successful immuno precipitation so whichever antibody we are going to use it should be highly specific and have a higher amount of affinity for the antigen of our choice antibodies raised against synthetic peptides and recombinant proteins often work well in western blotting and but may not bind the antigen in their native conformation solution so we have to play with the solution to avoid this mess when we are using commercial antibodies we should select particular antibody so that it should specifically binding to our antigen and we can confirm that using the product information so we should recognize what are the proper antibody of our choice and what is the antigen or a target or a protein we are targeting how to improvise immuno precipitation so sometimes it happens like it is not working or uh, the antigen of our choice is not getting eluted out so we have to play with some factors so that is called as some kind of standardization so what you can do you should always consider that your antigen concentration your primary antibody concentration and a secondary antibody concentration so as you can see your antigen is uh, having least concentration your primary antibody is having more concentration than your antigen and your secondary antibody is having more concentration than your primary antibody and why this is important because if you have excess of primary antibody 
relative to secondary antibody then there is a good amount of chance that primary antibody will form a complex with your antigen and that antigen antibody complex will compete with the secondary antibody resulting in a lower yield of recovery which we don't want so when we use a polyclonal antibody an excess of primary antibody relative to the antigen will prevent the formation of oligomeric complex therefore this concentration should be optimized by testing different ratios so you have to take care of that the concentration of your particular primary and secondary antibody should be more than your antigen so as you have previously i have shown this like these were the beads which were bound to your secondary antibody what kind of beads we could have so we could have agarose beads we could have magnetic beads and we could have magnetic agarose beads so what is the diameter of that approximately agarose beads diameter is 100 micrometer magnetic 1.6 micrometer and magnetic agarose beads diameter is 50 micrometer then antibody binding capacity of that agarose beads is high magnetic beads is low and magnetic agarose beads is high again what is the likelihood of sample loss during the washing step agarose beads more magnetic beads least and magnetic agarose beads it is least again whether the magnetic rack is required because this is going to be little bit expensive in case of agarose beads it is not required because our beads are not magnetic basically in case of magnetic and magnetic agarose beads yes we require the magnetic rats whether the centrifugation principle is going to be applied over here yes in case of agarose beads it is going to be on the basis of centrifugation in case of magnetic beads it is not required because centrifugation principle is not required in these two cases what is the visibility of beads because this is very much important because on the basis of visibility we can think of whether uh, secondary antibody has bound to it Uh, our primary antibody or not the visibility when we are using agarose beads it is poor when we are using magnetic beads it is better and magnetic agarose beads it is better then we have to take care of the protease inhibitors we we should add actually protease inhibitors because there is a good amount of chance whatever proteins uh, on the basis of lysis of the cell or it is present at particular cell region there will be proteases which will subject to your protein of choice and they will get degraded and they will not bind to your primary antibody to take care of that we should add particular protease inhibitors so if we know what kind of proteases may be present so in that case we can add proteases particular uh, edta or if we don't know what kind of protease inhibitors we should have because if that is solution then we are not sure ki what kind of proteases will be present which we should inhibit so in that case we could use a combination of multiple small molecule inhibitors such as pmsf or edta in a combination so this is also important step so this is to avoid degradation of protein and antibody complex by a proteases okay then elution condition in most of the application proteins are eluted using sda sample buffer containing a reducing agent such as two mercapto ethanol in addition to target protein the antibodies used for immunoprecipitation co eluded so what exactly happens apart from your target protein okay antibodies which is bound to your target protein they also get eluted out during this process so we have to think of uh, western blotting or mass analysis when we are considering this fact so this is just a step wise procedure what exactly happens i am going to show you now so this is the antigen primary antibody bind to it okay so you incubate your primary antibody add 500 microliter of protein extract and 2 to 10 microgram of the primary antibody to 1.5 ml tube this could be a pen drop tube also known as micro centrifuge tube incubate at 4 degrees celsius for 1 hour or overnight depending on your standardization protocol with a shaking on a rotator after incubation with secondary antibody add a secondary antibody over here and then incubate at 4 degrees celsius for 1 hour to overnight that depends on on again rotating shaker and that depends on your protocol then wash it wash the pellet then add 1 ml of ice cold lysis buffer or a washing buffer 
okay centrifuge it if you are using agarose beads then perform the sds page okay or a western blot and then antibodies are correlated which should be taken into account when analyzing the data so for elution step you can do what 50 microliter of 2x sds sample buffer containing mercaptan and ethanol and heat it for 5 minutes and then elute the target protein from the beads and then centrifuge it when you are using agarose beads use the supernatant for sds page so subject that supernatant which got eluted out by using two mercaptan ethanol as a reducing agent and then subject it to sds page so myself lalit samant and this is my qualification and research and teaching experience so please like share and subscribe to our video thank you